I've been silent long enough. When I observe what our country and our world are becoming, I'm both saddened and angered. You see, I know firsthand how our current system is manipulated and utilized, not for truth and justice, but for political power and greed. Let me share a brief overview of my experience. I struggled for 20 years to build a business and a brand. My entire focus was and continues to be to help you become an independent thinker, to think for yourself, to do your own research, to reach your own conclusions. But the system doesn't want independent thinkers. Have you noticed that? It should be more obvious now than ever before, particularly in the last several years. What the system wants is compliance and assimilation. What the system wants is people in fear because then they're easy to manipulate. After 20 years of month-to-month -month struggle, I was asked to participate in a documentary called The Secret. You might remember it. It became a worldwide sensation, and I'm incredibly grateful for The Secret, even though I never fully agreed with the way the Law of Attraction was presented. Contrary to that presentation, I teach you to follow God's laws to be a principled and virtuous person, to get up early, work hard, overcome adversity, work out, be healthy, eat right, have great relationships, persevere, and be willing to sacrifice for the outcomes you desire in your life. Let's face it, there's no so-called easy way. I taught people to not buy into the naysayers or the media, to think for themselves. I taught people, and I still do, that true wealth is more than just money. It's harmony, well-being, fulfillment, financially, relationally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. This philosophy blew up in a time of prosperity, and it resonated with those who were looking for a comprehensive and well-rounded life. I very quickly went from month-to-month -month struggle for 20 years to a $10 million Inc. 500 company. I became a multimillionaire with an estate on Mulholland Drive in Beverly Hills. I had multiple Oprah appearances, as well as Larry King, The Today Show, Good Morning America, and a whole lot more. The media couldn't get enough of my controversial style, but that didn't last. In 2009, my team and I were involved in a terrible accident. We conducted a sweat lodge in Arizona. If you watch mainstream media, you probably heard about it. Sadly, three people ended up losing their lives that day, and multiple individuals got sick. They were foaming at the mouth. They had dilated pupils. This was shocking as we conducted this experience every year for five years prior, and nothing like this had occurred previously. It was a horrendous accident, and it broke my heart. Upon admission to the ER, the medical admission forms written in the doctor's own handwriting stated, quote, check for toxins. You see, the presenting problems of foaming at the mouth and dilated pupils were not the effect of heat exposure. They were the effect of poison. The state claimed it was heat, though. It was testified in trial under oath that the location we rented the lodge and materials from, Angel Valley Ranch, had stored the materials with rat poison and pesticides. They also used pressed wood for the fire, which is toxic when you burn it. Anyone with a brain knew it was a horrible accident. My legal team told me not to worry because there had been many deaths previously in sweat lodges and not one of them had ever been prosecuted as a crime. Well, there's a first time for everything, isn't there? I was an easy target with an unpopular topic for the mainstream. A public figure who told people to think for themselves, to not buy into the propaganda put out by the system. Sound familiar? Now, imagine with me for a moment that you rent a hotel room for an event. During that event, poisonous gas is pumped through the duct system. People die, and yet because you rented the room, and because it was your event, you are held criminally responsible for the deaths. Now think about that for a moment. That makes absolutely no sense, does it? Yet the state came after me for manslaughter with a 30-year prison sentence. Not only did I lose three people I cared about, I lost everything else as well. My entire life was shattered and destroyed. I spent four months on trial, four days a week, eight hours a day, with a 30-year sentence hanging over my head. During the trial, the DA and our so-called justice system had 32 counts of prosecutorial misconduct. This is all public record, by the way. Normally, just one count of prosecutorial misconduct is grounds for a mistrial, yet there was no mistrial. The state and the DA were sanctioned. They were fined for suppressing evidence in my favor. Normally, that would bring a mistrial as well, yet there was no mistrial. Let me ask you, when those sworn to uphold the laws and justice are the ones breaking the laws and justice, where do you find justice? 
Fortunately, even with all of this, the jury couldn't find one shred of evidence to prove there was any intentional harm, because there wasn't. Yet I served two years in prison and exited in 2013. When I was released, I was homeless, I was in horrible physical condition, I was alone, and I was $20 million in debt. Let me ask you, what do you do when life kicks you in the teeth and knocks you down? You get back up. You keep moving forward, one step at a time. You see, the darkness I've experienced has taught me, it's driven me, it's committed me more towards the light. So let's fast forward to today. I'm no longer homeless. I'm not alone. I'm married to the most amazing woman on the planet, and we have a lovely home in Henderson, Nevada. The dad is fully retired, and I'm doing what I'm here to do, to help you be an independent thinker, to help you remember who you are and what you're capable of in a time in our world that I believe this is absolutely necessary, in a time when so many people are facing their own dark night. Here are a few things my wife Beersheba and I do now virtual events to help you be, obviously, an independent thinker, to think and act big and bold, and to remember your God-given potential. Business consulting, working primarily with business culture. Culture is the collective beliefs, perceptions, and assumptions of all team members. You see, culture drives behavior. Businesses don't perform. People perform. Bersaba and I both do intensive work one-on-one -on -one with a select group of clients to help heal and integrate unresolved emotional issues and trauma. As you might imagine, that's something we both know quite a bit about. We work with couples, helping them build an outstanding romantic relationship. We do crisis coaching and so much more. So if you're ready to work with a no-nonsense, straight-talking and strategic power couple that's not talking from theory, but from real life experience, then we'd love to hear from you. It'll be an honor to help you.